Hi, I'm James Clark from the Department of Physiology at King's College London, and in this short tutorial I'm just going to walk you through the functions of Audacity, which is a free open source cross-platform audio editing software. You can download Audacity for free from the Audacity website. The link to this website is on the screen, it's audacityteam.org. You can download this software and install it for Windows, Mac or Linux systems free of charge. Once you've installed it, you'll be able to run it just like any other application from your computer. For this demonstration I'm going to be using the Mac version of Audacity. Now we've opened up Audacity on my Mac computer, I want to walk you through the front window as it opens. What we've got on the top left hand side are the transport controls. Pause, play, stop, rewind, forward, wind and record. Next to these are the tools. We have a select tool, an envelope tool for changing volume of your recording, the draw tool, the zoom tool, the time shift tool and a multi-tool which allows you to do different tasks. Next to this is the input meter, the indicator that shows you the volume of your microphone as you start recording. Next to this is the output meter, the volume indicator of your playback. Underneath this is the controller for the volume of recording, and next to this is the controller for the volume of playback. The recording volume selector is needed to set the correct input volume for when recording with a microphone. The playback selector only affects what is played back and doesn't affect what is recorded. Next to these are another set of tools that allow you to cut, copy, paste, trim or insert silence in your recording. There's the undo and redo buttons and then a series of buttons that control the zoom. Underneath this menu bar you have a simple selector to decide what you're going to record from and how you are going to record it. Since I'm using an Apple computer I use a system called Core Audio which is what the computer uses to manage its audio functions. On a Windows system this will be different. But next to this I can select the microphone I'm using. I have a choice of inputs on my machine but I've chosen the Rode microphone that I'm currently speaking through. I can then choose whether I have this recording as mono, a single channel, or stereo, two channels. For most audio recordings, mono channels suffice. They end up being smaller files, and most microphones are only a monophonic microphone. Next to this, you can choose which device you're going to play back your audio through. I've selected my USB audio speaker, which is currently plugged into my computer. At the bottom of the screen is essentially two more sections. There's a section around the project settings, which I suggest you leave as they are, since the settings that are default in this software are fairly good for most podcast recordings. Next to this is the time toolbar, which gives you an indication of the length of your recording in hours, minutes and seconds. So without any further ado, let's set ourselves up for doing an audio recording. The first thing we need to do is check our microphone input levels. Since I've already used this microphone, I know it's pretty much set up as it's meant to be, but to check the input levels, I need to click on the Click to Start Monitoring button within the Input Monitor window. I should see a little green line jumping up and down, and this green line indicates the volume of my recording. For a good quality recording, you want this volume to be somewhere between minus 18 and minus 6 on the scale. You'll note that the recording volume here is exactly where it should be because this microphone has been set up correctly. If you find your microphone volume too low, you either need to move closer to the microphone or increase the volume of the microphone in the software. You can increase the volume or decrease the volume by moving this little slider here that says recording volume down or up. If you find your volume is too loud, in fact you find that this line is going beyond the green into the yellow and then finally into the red, this will indicate that you might be distorting or clipping your recording. If this is the case, you will definitely need to move the volume lever down to accommodate for this clipping. If you intend to do any shouting during your recording, I would always practice the shouting first and make sure that the volume levels are right. Once you've checked your input levels and you are happy that everything is working, you can start recording. Now we are recording some audio. You can see a blue waveform appearing on the screen which indicates the recording that I am making. 
There is a single blue waveform because I am recording in mono. If I was recording in stereo, I would see two parallel waveforms, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. You'll notice that between my sentences there is a little blue horizontal line which indicates that there is a silence in the recording. On your computer, you should be able to record for many hours with the available hard disk space. For instance, on this Apple computer, with approximately 60 gigabytes of space on my hard disk, I can record for 92 hours. I'm not going to do that for this tutorial, I can assure you. What's also good about this editing software is you can actually change the recording once you have made it. So if you... So it, so if you make a mistake, you can always go back after the recording and edit the recording. For instance, I made a mistake there, and we're going to edit that out very shortly. Now I've finished recording, I'm going to press stop. So now the recording is finished, you'll notice that it automatically stops the input monitor, and the timeline stops moving on the screen, and we have successfully recorded 1 minute and 12 second recording. I can now look at this recording in its entirety by going to the Zoom toolbar and clicking on the fourth button which fits my project to the width of the window. So that is my entire recording. I can edit any section of this recording by using the Selection tool, highlighting a selection of the audio and then choosing one of the many functions that Audacity can perform. But before I do this, I just want to go to that mistake I made towards the end and correct it. It's around about here. Let's have a listen. So if you so, so if you make a mistake, there we are. These first two waveforms here are the mistake. So I can highlight those and press either the delete key or go to edit and choose delete. Now I can listen to this section back by highlighting it and pressing play. You can actually change the recording once you have made it. So if you make a mistake, you can always go back after... And there we are, I've edited out that small problem. In the same vein, I can go to the end of my recording and select the silence at the end and delete that by pressing the delete key. I can go to the silence at the beginning and delete that too. But I want to make sure I delete the right bit, so I choose the Zoom tool and highlight that section just to zoom in, then click on Select, highlight the silence, and delete it. I can now look at my recording again. It's good to leave natural pauses in a recording and not to cram all your audio into the shortest time possible but it's also good to make sure that any long pauses have been deleted. For instance, there's a long pause here. I'm going to highlight a small amount of this and remove that long pause by pressing delete. When you listen to audio recordings online, you'll notice they have a very consistent volume. They all sound about right. This is a function that Audacity can perform for you, and it's called normalization. Essentially, normalization is when it gets your recording and amplifies it to a consistent volume across the entire length of the file so that there is no distortion, but the volume is as high as it can be without any clipping or distortion taking place. To apply normalization to your file, you double click on your entire waveform, choose Effect, and choose Normalize. Leave all the options as default as these are standard broadcast levels and press OK. You'll note immediately that the waves in your waveform have increased in size, showing that these have a higher amplitude or volume, and now your file is normalised. You won't notice too much when playing this back on your home system, because you've probably been listening to this file quite a lot, but you will notice a difference when you play your file now alongside other commercial recordings. If a section of your recording is unnecessarily quiet, for instance this section here which I'm going to highlight, looks a little bit quieter than the rest of the recording. I can use the Envelope tool to make this section a little bit louder. By clicking on the Envelope tool, you'll notice I now get this grey line surrounding my recording. This is an indication of a volume change line. If I click anywhere on the waveform, it forms a small dot, and then I can drag and make the rest of the waveform bigger, 
click some more, and then make the other waveform back to its normal size. So by doing this, I can selectively make this section of my audio recording slightly louder and accommodate for any movement that I might have made with respect to my microphone. You don't have to go overboard with this kind of editing as you would do in a podcast recording of J.K. Rowling's books, for instance, but you might find that it might save a recording just to make a certain section a little bit louder. Once you've completed any of this editing, you can just click away from the envelope editing tool and everything has returned to the normal editing window, but the envelope you have applied will remain in place. So you've recorded a short recording, you've edited the ends to cut away any silence, you've corrected any mistakes you've made and removed any long pauses within the recording. And in this case, we've also corrected the volume of a small section of our audio to accommodate for some movement with respect to the microphone. So now we can save our file. Audacity has its own file format, and I do recommend you save your file in its file format before attempting to export. I will choose File, Save Project As. Audacity will warn you that the file you are just about to save is not actually an audio file that can be played back on any system. It's just an Audacity project file which will allow you later to export. I'm not going to show this warning again and click on OK. And then I'm going to save this in my Documents folder as Recording 1. Now that I've saved this file, I don't have to worry about losing it, and I can go back to the File menu and choose Export. The best and simplest way of exporting this file for other people to listen to is exporting it as an MP3. An MP3 is a standard online audio file which is suitably compressed in order to be able to listen and download easily online. You could save as a WAV file, but this file will be considerably bigger than the MP3. By clicking on Export as MP3, you'll get an option to choose certain different settings. For instance here, you can choose between the bitrate mode, the quality, the speed, and the channel mode. To be honest, the simplest settings are the default settings. But you could choose between different quality levels and the speed of your encoding. The industry standard for MP3 files is to have a joint stereo file. You could export as mono, but this may cause some problems on some streaming media software, so it's best to leave it as joint stereo. Once you've made sure the file name is correct and the location is correct, just click on Save. Once you've clicked on Save, you can give them the option to enter certain details about your MP3 file. If you've downloaded MP3s off the internet before, you'll notice they have the artist name, track titles, album numbers, etc. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. But since we're here, I'm just going to call it James Clark and the track title is Recording 1. Once you're happy with this, press OK. Now the audio has been recorded and the file has been saved and you can share this file anywhere you want online. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel.